Uh, I'm Angel Ortiz for Sefija Online, and here I am with J.B. Kaufman, a Hi. film historian. Yeah, yeah. I love film historians. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> and you've written a lot on Pinocchio. I, uh, I have. And, uh, so what, uh, what specific uh, things you can tell us that you learn in your treasures of uh, figuring out how Pinocchio came about? Well, uh, there's a long answer to that. <laughs> the short answer is, is that it is just endlessly amazing to me the, the wealth of creative inspiration and ideas that went into this film. Mm -hmm. They actually managed to produce the whole film in a period of two years, which is about half the time it had taken to make Snow White. Uh, but it's but it's just incredible the the wealth of ideas and and, mm -hmm. and uh, material that they generated and a lot of it they didn't use they really came up with enough story material that they could have made three or four movies out of it mm -hmm. but um, but then they took the best of that and refined it down into the film that we see as mm -hmm. Pinocchio. Do you think that it took half the time to do it uh, compared to Cinderella because of the technology it changed? Or, uh? I think partly it's because they had the experience of one feature film under their, their belts by then, so, so they, they could rely on that. But also, um, a lot more people worked on it. There were hundreds and hundreds of people working simultaneously on, on Pinocchio and all doing specialized work. So, so, for example, there was one effects animator who specialized in water. And for two years, he animated water. And there's a lot of water in Pinocchio. Yes, there is. Uh, but, but that was his job. And, and if you multiply that by the hundreds of other people who were working on the film, all of the, these specialized functions were, were happening at the same time, and they were all coordinated by the vision of one person, and that was Walt Disney. Uh, in your process of this, the, did you get a hint of why Walt was, uh, Pinocchio was so special to Walt? Um, yeah, I, I think I think actually it wasn't a story that he had grown up with, mm -hmm. but uh, but someone on the staff suggested it, and the more he looked into it, the more it appealed to him. And he and Walt actually even wrote a little uh, publicity piece that appeared when the movie was released, mm -hmm. talking about how animation was really the only way you could picture some of the fantastic things that happen in the story of Pinocchio, mm -hmm. and uh, so I think it appealed to him as a story that would stretch the boundaries and explore the possibilities of the medium that he loved so much. Mm. Uh, I know you've written extensively on Pinocchio, but what other uh, Disney uh, stories do, uh, that you've uh, written about? Well, um, uh, Snow White is one. Uh, that, was, that was their first feature length film, and, and I've always got a soft spot in my heart for, <laughs> for Snow White. Um, I've, uh, I, I, I actually wrote a book about the Latin American films that were made during the 1940s, and that is a kind of fascinating story, too. Oh, tell me a little about that. Uh, they were made in, in connection, the, the U.S. government had a program called the Good Neighbor Program mm -hmm. during the war, and uh, so they were, they were, they were encouraging uh, Latin American themes and, and uh, subjects in, in Hollywood films, and the Disney company uh, really uh, got into line with that, and they made they made a film called Saludos Amigos. Mm -hmm. They made one called The Three Caballeros, <laughs> and and then there were also a, a whole lot of short subjects and educational films that came out of that project too. Mm. I, I I actually read something you worked on the Silly Symphonies. That's true. Mm. That's true. I grew up watching the Silly Symphonies. They're, they're great, aren't they? <laughs> yes. As as far as one real cartoons are concerned, I think the Silly Symphonies are the gold standard. Mm. I, and well. What got you into being a film historian? Uh, just the fact that I love the subject. I, I always think that writing a book is, is basically a great excuse to do the research because the research is the fun part. And you get to, you get to really study the process that went into making these great films. And, and, that's, and that's what I love. The, uh, oh, growing up, was that uh, film was one of your favorite things to to. It, it was, it was. I got hooked at an early age, and, uh, and so, yeah, I, I, um, that, that was just something that was kind of a consuming passion all along. And, and of all the, uh, the books that you've done and all the films that you've seen, any one in particular is a favorite? I, I could never just single out one favorite, uh, but I can tell you that when it comes to animation, 
I, I could narrow it down to maybe three or four, and Pinocchio would be one of the top ones. It's it's just as as an example of the craft of animated films. It's it's one of the most lavish, elaborate, beautiful uh, productions that anyone has ever produced. Mm -hmm. Well, JV, thank you so much. Well, this thank you. Really wonderful. You. Well, it's well, it's a pleasure <laughs> to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you too.